These are the 24 left hand patterns, um, part three, and we're starting with the third finger on each one of these. Um, part one was starting with the first finger, part two with the second finger, and now we're with the third finger. And um, try to understand the logic of these so that you don't have to look at the page uh, and study it when you're playing it. Um, but it, it's uh, thinking in pairs like 3, 1, 2, 4, and then 3, 1, 4, 2. So you invert the second pair. And you always go with the lower number first. So 3 to 1, that's the lowest number, and then 2, a low number, to 4. 2 is lower than 4. And then 3, 1, invert, 4, 2. And then you do 3, 2, 1, 4, and then 3, 2, 4, 1. And then, well, let me play them again. So it's like, I'm just going to play one pattern. 3, 1, 2, 4, and then 3, 1, 4, 2. So that's the first pair. And then 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 4, 1. And then 3, 4, that's the only one left, 1, 2, and then 3, 4, 2, 1. Okay? So, um, and what we're doing is giving a good workout. So if we're doing uh, 3, 1, 2, 4, we're going 3, 1 twice, 2, 4 twice, and then 3, 1, 2, 4 twice. 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4. And that gives us more of a workout than if we just kept doing 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4. And we're going to do it on the first string, repeat it on the second string, repeat it on the third string, and then go back to the second string. And then when we get back to the first string, we start the next pattern, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2. So try to see the logic in the way that these unfold. And uh, these are the ones with the third finger. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with them later on, like you can do hammer-ons and pull-offs. I may have mentioned that in the other videos. but. That's just one thing you can do. You can also divvy it up between two strings, like three, one, three, one, two, four, two, four, three, one, two, four. And it sounds interesting, but it's also good for working on bouncing back between strings. Now, um, another point to look at is holding fingers whenever you can. Like if I do the second one, Three, one, three, one, four. I hold one into four, two, four, two. Now I've got one and two down when I play three, and then I have to lift three and two to play one. So it is kind of complicated. You have to look at each little turn and twist that you're doing. Three, one, you'd hold one. Four, you're still holding one. Two. Now you're holding one and two while you play four, and then hold one and two when you play three for one more note, and then you lift three and two, and then you just do three and one. Okay, so you have to look at uh, if you can hold a finger for one more note, hold it for that one more note, and just hold the fingers whenever you can. You don't want to do this kind of thing. want to hold them so that they're more efficient okay so that's the thing you have to really go through them slowly and think you know think them out uh, what fingers can I hold as I go through this and um, then you'll find that you'll play much more efficiently and holding the fingers will become a habit and you won't have to think about it so much you know, that's, that's, what we, that's where we want to get with these. And they're finger dexterity exercises. So we're working on all kinds of combinations. These are much more um, 
advanced than the ones that were in book one. And these are professional patterns that a lot of professionals use to warm up with. And you can work on speed, you can work on shifting, you know, with them. There's all kinds of things. So have fun with these. Uh, subscribe to YouTube John Hedger Guitar Studio and like my Facebook page John Hedger Guitar Studio. Thank you.